What's up guys, there is Cousin here. Welcome to the last Redux with Redux Toolkit tutorial video you're ever going to have to watch. I promise you, if you watch this video and you watch it until the end, you're never going to have to watch another video on this ever again. All right, cool. We're now on my computer and we can begin. The first thing that I wanna do is just spend a couple of minutes, not too long, just talking about Redux as a whole and also talking about the three main concepts of Redux, the store, actions, and reducers. And then we are going to build a simple application using Redux Toolkit so that you get to see how all of the different pieces come together and also how easy it is to work with modern Redux using Redux Toolkit. All right, so let's talk about Redux. Redux is essentially a state management library that allows you to have global state. In the context of React, what this means is that you can have state that is accessible from any component no matter where they are in the tree. This is why it's called a state management library and it makes it really, really easy to configure and to have global state in your React applications. So Redux has three different concepts and they're all super, super important. The first concept is the concept of a store. So I'm just gonna write store here, store. The store is essentially state. It is the global state that as I've just mentioned is going to be accessible across any component no matter where they are in your React application. The store, you get to define it in any way that you want. You can put whatever you want in there it's completely up to you and the needs of the application. And Redux with Redux Toolkit will allow you to easily set this up and then connect it to your React application. Now, the store will usually be made up of multiple slices, multiple slices of the state, each responsible for a certain domain in the application. For example, let's say that we had a counter application. We would have a counter slice, a counter slice of our state, which would hold the pieces of state that are specifically related to the counter. So for example, we could do something like interface and then counter state and we can define whatever state we want for this counter. For example, we could do value and that is going to be of type number. We would have a slice of our state called the counter state, which would hold the value of our count, which is of type number. And then that would be one part of our Redux state. Then we could maybe have another piece of our state, for example, enter face, and then we can do user state with a capital. And that will hold all of the pieces of state for our user. For example, is signed in, right? Is the user currently signed in? Is the user currently signed out? Now, of course, I'm grossly oversimplifying this in a real application. You would have a lot more than this, but the point is that your state, your global store in Redux is going to be made up of multiple slices and they all come together to form one global state that is going to be accessible in your entire application. Then the next concept in Redux is the concept of actions. So I'm gonna come here and do actions. Actions are essentially what you use to tell Redux what it should do to the state. In the case of our counter state here, we have a value which is of type number, which means that we might have an action to increment the count to make this value plus one. And we also might have an action to decrement the count to make this value minus one. Actions in Redux have two properties that are super, super important. So let me just write some code here to illustrate this. This is not like real code, this is pseudo code, just to illustrate you what I mean with this example. I'm going to do const increment, that is going to be equal to an object, which is going to have a type, that type is gonna be increment, I'm just going to remove this here. And then we also have payload, which is gonna be one. This is what an action looks like, and let me just do the same thing for a decrement. So I'm just gonna come here and do the current. Now we have two pseudo actions. Remember, this is pseudo code. This is not real code. They have a type, which is always going to be of type string. And this is required. This is essentially the name of this action, right? Redux is going to use this type to determine what it should do to the state. If it receives an action with a type of increment, it'll know that it has to increment the state by one. If it receives an action with a type of decrement, it'll know that it has to decrement the state by one. Then we have this payload here, which is the second property of an action. This one is not required. This is optional. The payload is essentially any data that you want to send to Redux in your action so that it can perform its job. Let's say that instead of increment, we had an action that was increment by amount and we needed a certain amount to increment our state by, our count by. We would use this payload to pass the actual value that we want to increment our state by. That is going to be the payload of this action. 
But in this case, in the case of increment, we don't actually need a payload because increment really just means increment by one. So in this specific case, we could just go without this payload. We can just remove it here in both cases because you don't want to increment by anything else other than one, so you don't actually need a payload. But if you had an action, for example, increment by amount, right, we would then need to have a specific payload because we don't know what amount we want to increment the state by. So in this case, to Redux, we would send a payload, in this case of 10. It can be anything you want. This payload doesn't have to be a number. It's only a number because we're working in our counter state pseudo example, right? But you can literally define your state and your actions in any way, and you can send whatever payload you want. Then we have the third concept in Redux, which is the concept of reducers. Reducers essentially are responsible for taken an action and then depending on the type of the action will actually go out and make the update in the Redux store. They will use the type of the action to know what updates to do and optionally they will use the payload to do those specific actions to make those specific updates to the Redux store. Now, one very important thing to know about reducers and also to know about Redux in general is the fact that reducers will never directly make an update to the Redux store. We have this concept of immutability, which means that we're never allowed to directly mutate the state. Instead, what reducers are going to do is they're going to take the state, they're going to make a copy of the state, and then make those changes to that copy of the state, which will also have all the other unchanged properties of the state, and then will completely replace the state as a whole with the copy that has the changes applied. We're never going to directly mutate the state. Redux does not work if you mutate the state directly. You always have to follow the concept of immutability, make a copy to the state, make the changes to that copy, copy and then overwrite the entire state. This is very important because this is how Redux works. Cool. So now with this, we fully understand Redux. We understand the store actions and reducers and how they all work together, which means that we have everything that we need to actually start building our simple application with Redux Toolkit so that you actually get to see how to implement the store, the actions and the reducers, and how to connect all of it together easily with Redux Toolkit. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create our store. So I'm going to come here to my file explorer. I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to just keep things very simple. I'm going to to call this folder state. So we'll do state and inside of this folder, I'm going to create a new file and this one is going to be store.ts. This file is going to hold our Redux store. So what we need to do to create a store is we need to import something from Redux toolkit. So I'm going to do import configure, actually let me just try again, import configure store and we have the import right here. We're going to import configure store from Redux.js toolkit and that is going to allow us to easily create our store. Then we're going to come here and we're going to do export const store equals configure store. This is going to take a parenthesis and then an object as a parameter. And then this object will only take one key and that is going to be reducer. And for now, because we don't actually have any reducers, we're just going to give this an empty object. But as soon as we create our different reducers or different slices of our state, as we've seen here, we're going to then come here and connect them using the store so that then they will be accessible across our entire application. And finally, what we need to do, because we are working in TypeScript, we're going to need to export two types that are going to be very useful as we work with all of the different components of Redux and Redux Toolkit in our React application. So already, Copilot is being very helpful and knows exactly what I want to export. The first type that I want to export, if I can just do it, is going to be the root state. So this is essentially the return type, which is a TypeScript helper utility of the type of store.getState. So this configure store gives us a store variable here, which has a get state function. And then we can get the return type of that function to have as our root state. So then in any React component, as you're going to see, whenever we need to access the state using a selector, we're going to be able to define the state using this root state type. And then we'll have access in TypeScript to all of our state super easily. Then right below, we're going to export another type and that is going to be the app dispatch type, which is also going to be very useful. So I'm going to come here and do export type 
app dispatch and then of course copilot knows exactly what i want this comes from the type of store.dispatch so we also have another function on the store called dispatch and we can get the type of that function and then export this as this app dispatch type you're going to see this is going to come very useful when we're trying to do asynchronous actions using our use dispatch hook cool so now with this we've successfully created our redux store the next step for us to do is to connect this store to react because react by default can not directly talk to Redux. We have to use a provider from React Redux to then connect our store and our entire Redux application state to React. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come here in my main file, wherever I'm basically rendering the entire app, and then I'm going to import a provider. If I can type properly, I have a new keyboard. That is why this is a little bit slower. Provider from React Redux, and then also we're going to import our store that we just created. So I'm going to come here and do import store, and that is going to be from dot state slash store. This is exactly the store that we just created right now. This provider comes directly from React Redux and not from Toolkit, which is what is going to allow us to connect our Redux store to our React application. This provider works with the Redux Context API, which if you're not familiar with it, I do have a whole tutorial video on that that you can watch to get yourself up to speed. And essentially, we are going to wrap our entire app with this provider, provide our store to the provider, which is then going to allow us to use the store in any React component. So I'm gonna come here, make a new line, and then just do provider. I'm going to give it the store here and then right below the app, I'm just going to make another line and then just close this provider tag and then save and then actually remove this because this is unneeded. And this is what we need to now connect React to Redux. So we use this provider, we injected it to store using context, which means that now the store is going to be accessible to our entire app and any component, no matter where they are in the tree. It's really, really useful. Now that we have our provider set up, we can actually go and create our first slice of state. So what we're going to build in this tutorial video is going to be a simple counter application. So we're going to need to create our counter slice. So I'm going to come here in my state folder. I'm going to make a new folder called this counter. This is going to hold our counter slice. And then I'm going to make a new file and call it counter slice.ts. This file is going to contain everything that we need, every, anything that is related to our counter slice, our actions, our reducers, our state, they're all going to go in this file. So the first thing that we need to do, because we are working in TypeScript, we need to define our state. So what I'm going to do is do interface counter state, and then we're going to just give it value, and that is going to be of type number. We're not gonna give it anything else because frankly, we don't need anything else in our state. Then the next step is we need to actually create our initial state. I'm going to let Copilot here be very helpful. We have initial state, which is going to be of type counter state, and that is going to initialize the value to zero, which means that whenever we're initializing the state, it's always going to start with the value being zero. Then what we need to do is come here and create our actual slice. So I'm going to do const counter slice, and that is going to be equal to create slice. And I'm going to import this directly from Redux.js toolkit. That is going to take a parenthesis, and then it's going to take an object as a parameter. The keys that we're going to give to this object are the name. That is going to be the name of our slice, which is going to be counter. We don't want to do anything fancy, right? This is a simple name for a simple slice. Then it's going to take in an initial state, which we can just give it here initial state. That is going to be the state that this slice will start with. And then we can give it some reducers. So I'm just going to do reducers. And then for now, we're not gonna have any actual reducer. So this is just going to be a simple empty object. And then we're going to come here at the bottom and do something really, really cool. I'm going to do export default counter slice dot reducer and then save this essentially because we're using create slice from redux.js toolkit this gives us a lot of benefits a lot of cool things behind the scenes without us having to set up anything just by defining the slice here we automatically get access to a reducer which we're exporting here by doing counter slice dot reducer this is only available because we're using create slice from redux.js toolkit and it's doing a lot of the magic for us if we weren't to use this we would have had to do a lot more boilerplate code to achieve the same functionality. So now with this, we've efficiently and easily exported the reducer as the default export of this file, which means that we can now come here to our store where we defined our store and we had this empty reducer key here and we can import that reducer that we just created. So I'm going to come here and do import counter reducer from 
and that's going to be dot counter slash counter slice. Essentially, this is the reducer that we just exported here as the default export. Then inside of this reducer object here, instead of it being empty, I'm going to do counter counter reducer. And now we've essentially connected the counter slice to our store, which is then going to be accessible using this provider to our entire React application. The beauty of setting it up this way is that you can have as many slices as you want. As we've seen before, right? We had the counter state here. We had the user state. We can have any number of states. We would just create a slice for each of those states. They would have their own individual slices of state. And very soon we're going to see actions and reducers. And then you can just combine all of them here, which makes it really, really easy to have separation of concerns. Each slice is responsible for its own state and nothing else. And it makes everything really organized and really, really easy to work with. Cool. So now let's actually build some actions and reducers. Now, Redux Toolkit makes this really, really simple. The only thing that we need to do to create both a reducer and an action is just define a reducer here. So I'm going to make a new line here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do increment. And that is going to be our reducer. And reducers, they always take a state as a parameter, and then they will just return here. And let me just see if Copilot can do it. Yes, it can. So reducers, you have to define them by a name. You have to give them a key. And then they will always take a state. And optionally, if I can just type properly, my keyboard is really hard to get used to. They will also take here an action. But this is optional. This doesn't always need to happen because it can happen in the case of increment, for example, where you don't actually need to use any Thing from the action, you just know that you have an increment and you just need to update the state to plus one. So in this case, specifically for the increment reducer, we're just not going to give this because this is going to be an unused property. Now, there's something really interesting that I want you to pay attention to because this is super important. Remember how in the beginning of the video, I said that Redux, you never mutated the state directly. You always make a copy to the state and then you replace the entire state with it. Well, here, it seems that this increment reducer will take take the state and then we'll directly assign state.value plus equals one. Isn't this directly mutating the state? Is this a mistake? Well, no, this isn't a mistake, but at the same time, I'm not sure how I feel about this because this can get really confusing, especially to someone that's just starting out with Redux. Essentially, what's happening is because we're using create slice from Redux toolkit, as I've said, this does a lot of the magic for us behind the scenes so that we don't have to do it. And essentially what's happening here is this create slice is smart enough to know that we want to make this update to the state. So it allows us to write mutating code, right, which I put in quotes because because we're not actually mutating it. And what it is going to do is behind the scenes, it's going to make its own copy of the state, apply this change to that copy, and then return to us the value, the new state, then overwrite. This allows us to write mutating code, which makes it easier for us because we don't have to make all of those copies and manage those, but at the cost of it being a little bit confusing because it does look like we're writing mutating code. So just remember, because this is really important, you can only do this if you're using create slice from Redux otherwise you cannot do this and you would have had to make your own copy of the state and do all of that manually but because we're using this we don't have to do it and it's handled automatically for us which again mixed feelings it's convenient but it's also confusing great so now that we understand that we can make our next reducer which is going to be the decrement case this is going to be very simple it's going to be exactly the same thing we're going to do decrement that is also going to take the state here and also that is going to do state.value minus one. Again, because we're using create slice, we can do this and it's not going to be a problem. We're not actually going to mutate the state directly. So now these are our reducers. We've just told Redux that we have two reducers, increment and decrement, and this is how the state should update whenever we have actions that actually want to trigger those reducers. So then how do we create those actions? Well, this is another point of the magic of Redux Toolkit. We can easily get access to the actions by just doing export const and I'm going to let Copilot be very helpful. We're going to export const increment and decrement from counter slice dot actions. So just like we were able to get access to the reducer from this counter slice using Redux toolkit, we're also able to get the actions directly from this counter slice. And it is smart enough to know that we only have an increment action and a decrement action. So this makes it really, really easy because we don't have to write any extra code to create our actions. And 
now we've exported our actions, which means that we can directly use them in our React components. So we can then come here to our app. We can get rid of all of this introductory code that we had before. We can save this and then we can go to our counter component, which for now is empty. So now what we're going to do is we're going to connect this counter component to Redux to access the state. And also we're going to connect it so that it's able to dispatch some actions. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to connect this to the state. So I'm going to make here a new line and I'm going to do const count is going to be equal to use selector that is going to come from React Redux. This is a function, this is a hook, so it takes a parenthesis, and then it also takes a state as a parameter, and then it will return something here. So let's just do state.count. This is not correct because we haven't yet added any types to state. Now, remember, if I go here to the store, we've exported two different types here. One of these types is the root state. So we're actually going to use this root state to define our state here. So I'm just going to do here and then root state, import this from state.store, and now it knows that state.count is not valid because that is not how we define our state. So I'm going to come here, remove this, and then do state dot, and now it knows that we have a counter slice, and then I can do dot again, and that it knows that we have a value, which is going to be of type number, because that is how we defined it in our counter slice here, which means that now this count variable is of type number because everything is correctly typed. This is how you connect React to Redux. You have to use your selector and then you get the state and then you can select literally anything that you want. We could have selected anything besides the count, but in this case, we want the count. So that is how we got the count. Then the next thing that we need to do is we need to connect this to dispatch so that we're able to dispatch actions to our Redux store. So I'm going to do here const dispatch and that is going to be equal to use dispatch, which is also going to come directly from Redux. We are going to use this dispatch to dispatch actions because as I've said, React cannot directly talk to Redux. We need to use some of the hooks from React Redux to allow us to have that functionality to connect between a React component and our Redux store. Then I'm just going to make some space here, create a new line, and then we can actually build out our components. So the first thing that I wanna do is maybe something like H2 and then put our count here. My God, it's extremely difficult to type with this keyboard. I cannot for the life of me type count. There we go. Finally, after a thousand years. And then I'm going to create a new div here with maybe two buttons, a button here to, let me just fix this, a button here to increment, and then a button here to, to decrement, right? Currently there's no functions attached to these and we're gonna change that in just a moment. So button on click. That is going to be equal to here. We're going to create a parenthesis, create this and this, and now we are going to dispatch. And dispatch takes in an action, and that is going to be our increment, which again, we can import directly from our counter slice. So this is essentially what we've exported here. We've exported this increment action, which we can then import in our counter example, and then we can dispatch it, but because it's a function, we also need to put a parenthesis here. Then we're going to do the same thing here for decrement on click equals here and then open the parentheses and then arrow function dispatch decrement import this as well and then call this and we are done. This is how you dispatch actions in Redux. You use this dispatch from use dispatch and then you use the actions that come from the actions here of our slice and then you can easily dispatch them and then everything else is going to be handled automatically for you. Now, if we go back to our application, we now see our count here, which is initialized with zero. And then we have a button to increment and a button to decrement the count. If I press it, it's going to increment by one. If I press decrement, it's going to decrement. And essentially this works exactly as we expect. We have a full working counter example implemented in Redux with Redux Toolkit. Great, so now that we've seen how this works, let's create another action this time with an argument because right now our increment and decrement actions did not take any argument. So we're going to come here, go back to our slice, and then we're going to create a new reducer. And this one, this time is going to be increment by, and if I can type increment by amount. 
and this one is going to take the state but also this time it's going to take an action because we're going to need to pass a payload to be able to set by how much we want the state to be incremented by so i'm going to make this equal arrow function and then let's see what copilot does yes it's smart enough to figure that it can use the payload of the action to increment the state by and then because we are working in TypeScript, what I want to do is give this a type. So I'm going to come here and then do payload, payload action. We're going to import this directly from Redux Toolkit. And then we're going to give it a type. It's going to be number. Save this. And then we have increment by amount takes in the state as with any other reducer and then takes in an optional action with an optional payload and that payload is going to be of type number which means that we can do state.value plus equals action.payload. This payload you could define it in any way that you want instead of number we could have had something like an object here that had value and then we could do number and then this would no longer work because we would have to do actually value to then get the actual number so it's number plus number right but we're not going to do that we're just going to have count because we want to keep this symbol and really all we need is a count but again you can define this in any way that you want that's the whole point of redux is that it depends on the application and what it needs and you're free to configure this in any way that you want and then to get access to this action all that we have to do is come here and do increment by amount and again it already knows that this is an action so we can easily just use it in our counter component we can come here do increment by amount it already knows and then instead of increment we can do by amount and then we can pass it here 10 for example save this go back to our application increment it's going to increment by 10 increment again by 10 again increment again when i press decrement this one is still doing it by one so this application works exactly as you expect this is how easy it is to create any number of actions you just define the reducer you export the action and everything just works easily now let me show you something cool and really useful we're going to take a look at an asynchronous action because the reality is if you're working with redux oftentimes you're going to have to do asynchronous actions for example you want to fetch some data from an api that has to be asynchronous and there's a little bit more differences when you're doing that versus a simple action that is synchronous so let's come here and we'll define our asynchronous action we're going to do export const increment async that is going to be equal to something new that is going to be equal to create async thunk this is also going to come from Redux toolkit this is a parenthesis and then it takes a bit of argument so the first argument is going to be the name of the action so we're just going to do counter slash increment async can i type increment async async and that is going to be a comma and then it's going to take the actual function and hopefully we can let copilot do the work great this is going to be an asynchronous function it's going to take in our case a parameter that is going to be amount that is going to be of type number it is going to then wait for one second which is going to simulate waiting for something to happen this can simulate for example fetching data from an api which may very well take a second and then it's going to return the amount it's simple it's a simple example we'll we're mocking an asynchronous function but essentially we're just returning a value here which is going to then be the payload of this action now there's two very important things that we just did here the first one is the name we haven't actually defined any name for any of these other actions here and the reducers that is because redux toolkit will automatically do that for us so essentially every single one of these this is going to be counter slash increment counter slash decrement counter slash increment by amount we're going to see this in just a moment as we look at the redux dev tools but in the case of asynchronous functions we actually had to define our name ourselves so we did counter slash increment async this is the first thing and the second thing is in the case of asynchronous actions you always define the action first using create async thunk and then you define the reducers when we had synchronous actions we did the reducers first and then we did the actions it's a little bit different just because we're working with asynchronous functions and also the way that you define a reducer for an asynchronous function is different because it doesn't go in this reducers object it actually goes here at the bottom in something that we call extra reducers and this one will take a function what happened my keyboard is playing tricks on me again 
Oh my god, this is embarrassing. This whole video should be just Darius against computer, against the keyboard. This is going to take a builder as an argument. You don't need to worry about this builder is. It's just a tool that is going to allow you to essentially add cases to these reducers. And then again, let's let Copilot do its thing. Great, we have builder dot add case. And then here's the magic. We have increment async dot fulfilled. We're getting access to dot fulfilled because we used create async thunk. We're also gonna get access to pending and then the error state. Because when you're working with asynchronous functions, you're always gonna have different states. You're going to have the pending state while that action is running. In the case of here, while we're waiting for this promise, this is going to be in the pending state. The promise hasn't yet resolved yet. In the case of an API fetch, it's the duration that we need to wait for the data to come back from the API. And then we have the fulfilled state whenever this promise resolves and we actually get some data back, in this case, the amount, we're going to be in this fulfilled state. And essentially what we've done is we've told this builder, this extra reducers builder, to add a case for the increment async.fulfilled that should run some code. Again, it's going to take the state in an action, which is optional. And then it's going to make the same updates to the state in the same way that we did them here, just slightly different because we're using this extra reducers. This in concept literally works in exactly the same way. There's only a little bit of syntax difference just because we're working with asynchronous functions. Again, I'm going to define here action. I'm going to do action and then do a colon and then do payload action. And that is going to be of type number as well, just so that we know that this payload is a type number so that we can actually add it to the state value. And then this works because we pass the number here. This returns a number. Everything is works. No TypeScript is going to complain. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to add another case for the pending state just so that you get to see how it works. This is not actually needed for this action because really we have no use for a pending state. However, it's really important that you understand how this concept works, how asynchronous function work within Redux. So we're going to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and do builder dot add case. And that hopefully, let's see, can copilot? Yes, copilot knows exactly what we want. It is really great. Let's make a new line here. Exactly, I'm going to remove this comment because we don't need this. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to close this parenthesis here. I'm going to remove this builder here and I'm just going to chain these add cases and save. Essentially, you have one builder, you can add one case to it and then you can chain another case and you can essentially do this forever and you can chain as many cases as you want. So now we have a case for the increment async.pending, which again, we get access to because we're using this great async thunk, otherwise we would not have access to them. And in this one, we actually don't even need a state because we're not gonna actually do anything to the state. So I'm just going to remove this. All we're going to do is we're just going to console log increment async.pending so that we can see how all of this works. So now with this, because we've already exported this increment async function, we can just come here to our counter. We can just do import increment async. And then instead of this here, we can just do increment async and then we can pass it a number. It's actually going to give us an error. Argument of type async thunk. This is not configurable to any action. Correct, we forgot to do one thing. Remember here we had our root state. Let me just go to its definition. We also have at dispatch, which we haven't used. That is because we need to put it here. So we're going to do it app dispatch import this as well save this and now we no longer have an error this is needed if you're working with asynchronous actions so we've dispatched the increment async action again we've passed it this argument which it knows to expect an argument because we've defined it here we said amount is number right so this is the argument that is going to be used and then this argument gets returned here as the amount which is then going to come in this action here as the payload which is going to allow us to make the state update to our state so if I save all of this, go back to my counter, save all of this. And then if we go back to our application, if we also open up the console here, just so that we can see what's going on. If I press increment, we get increment async not pending. And then exactly one second later, our state is incremented by 10. Let's do it again. Increment, we get the console log. And then a second later, we get incremented by 10. A third time, just to be sure, increment console log. A second later, we get 30. Our application, our Redux application now fully supports asynchronous actions, which means that we can do anything that is asynchronous. Here we had a simple increment async, but you can do a fetch an API request. You can do anything that you want. You can have any amount of arguments here. You can define them how you want, do whatever you want in this function, return a payload, and then you get access to this payload here in this reducer builder. And then you can make any state updates that you want super, super easily.
Great, let me now just show you one last thing. This is going to be super short, but it's going to be worth it. And then I promise you, you're never going to have to watch another video on this ever again. What I want to show you is the Redux DevTools. These are really, really useful if you're working with Redux because it helps you debug a lot of things super easily. You can get this for Chrome, it's super easy. Just Google Redux DevTools and you're gonna get it as the first link. Essentially, this will automatically connect to your Redux store and then tell you everything that is going on in your application. So let me just refresh here so that we have a clean slate. Essentially, if I press increment here, let's see what happens. We get counter slash increment async slash pending, and then we get counter slash increment async slash fulfilled. These come directly from our reducers here, from our actions, because we use create async thunk. Remember, we get access to pending and then fulfilled. These are a same match. And remember how I said that we needed to define the name of this asynchronous function? We had to give it here counter slash increment async. Well, that's exactly what we're seeing here. We're seeing counter slash increment async slash pending. This pending and fulfilled comes directly from create async thunk. Not only that, but here on the right, if I select your fulfilled, you get to see exactly the difference that our state went when this action was done. We went from zero to 10. If I press increment again, we get a new pending and this one states are equal. There's no difference because remember in this one, all that we did is we just did a console log. So there's no actual state of this being done. But in the case of fulfilled, we we went from 10 to 20. You can easily track how all of your updates happen and which actions cause them. If we then do decrement, you're gonna see that the only thing that we have is counter slash decrement. Now, we never actually directly set the name of this action anywhere. This is because we use create slice and then we use these reducers here and then we exported them using this, using counter slice dot actions. This is automatically handled for us. So you never even have to worry about defining the name of your specific actions. Redux Toolkit is going to do that automatically for you. And if I click here, you're gonna see that our state went from 20 to 19. This is really useful because it helps you debug. It helps you figure out what went wrong if something went wrong in your React application and you can easily track which, which actions led to which state differences. Not only that, but another really cool feature of these dev tools is that you can directly jump to a previous action. For example, increment async slash fulfilled. I can press jump here and our state now goes back to the state where this action was done, right? You can see here the state, we went from zero to 10. I directly jumped back in time super Super easily to see how my application looked like at that specific point in time. I can click back here and I can jump to the present moment and our state now is 19 with all of these different updates. You can jump to any action, you can go back in time and forward in time super easily, which makes it really, really easy to debug. If you're working with Redux, with Toolkit or not, this is really invaluable and I would always recommend that you install this because it's really, really useful. Whew. All right, guys, that was a really long tutorial. I really hope that you've enjoyed this. That was Redux with Redux.js Toolkit. I promised you in the beginning of this video that if you watched this video and you watched it until the end, you wouldn't have to watch another video on this ever again. And I really hope that I was able to deliver on that promise. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like these, you can click here to subscribe. It would really help me out a lot. You can also click here to watch a different video of mine, which I'm sure that it's super, super awesome. And with that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.